Hello, I'm Elle and welcome back to my ethical fashion YouTube channel. If you're new here, I upload every Sunday and today I am talking about what Latino migrants carry over in their journey to the United States. This is a really important video because I'm Mexican American and I have parents that migrated over when they were my age. I'm 27 and it's kind of crazy to think that they took this really challenging journey to pursue American dreams and to pursue a lot of different things. So I'm kind of curious to discuss this and the challenges they face. Migrants are honestly just coming from all over. They're often sinking asylum they're often political refugees they're often fleeing violence prosecution and unstable governments in their own home countries and unfortunately when they do come to the united states they face so much criminalization there's a lot of prejudice and stigma associated with their journey despite these challenges i've seen that they've been the most strong people they're driven by so much hope they are really trying to make the best of their circumstances they're trying to find new opportunities not only for themselves but for their family that may be with them or for their family back in their own home country and they're really trying to center their financial well-being their mental well-being and hopefully their spiritual well-being by taking care of their needs and hopefully their desires yeah i can't help but remember a times article that i read a couple years ago when i was in college that discussed the harsh realities faced by undocumented migrants who can only carry so little of their own possessions even though i have mexican-american parents that journeyed over but i never took the time to think what are the things we would carry if we were to go on such a dangerous journey and as someone that really cares about my own stability and security and someone that loves things and loves fashion i don't know how i would imagine myself being able to embark on this journey that could maybe last a couple days or even weeks or even months there is no guarantee there's no answers at the end of this migrants have to do this they have to do it for their own well-being they're jumping in dangerous terrains they're crossing rivers they're jumping on trains and all sorts of weather conditions and we also can't forget that they experience robbery and assault and to get into this just imagine being a parent to wonder what you'll take and what you'll sacrifice for your children that are coming with you and these are not easy questions to grapple with and i don't wish them upon anyone i don't i don't think anyone journeys to do this for no good reason like the people that are migrating over and taking these decisions to come over to the United States are often the most vulnerable people that have the least amount of resources to do these sort of risks but they do it because they need to for themselves and for, for, for their family it's kind of crazy that you don't have the privilege to just take a suitcase like often when i'm thinking about traveling i'm like okay well i have my carry-on i have my purse i have my suitcases i can like bring a couple outfits but let's say you leave from your home country in a rush you don't even have the basics reading this times article that we're going to get into is actually really eye-opening what we actually really need for ourselves and what that means to us because often enough difficult choices have to be made every single day the choices that migrants have to do is honestly a very stark contrast to our normal everyday choices but it's a reflection of our privileges and the ability to have space for more things outside of our needs every item carried with migrants usually carry an essential element to their survival or hold a lot of emotional value and so what i'm trying to say is that to be a migrant to journey on such a path requires a lot of resilience, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of ruthless faith in the future their choice of outfits for their day is just one part of that journey so i have my handy laptop to the side let's take a look at the migrants from different countries this article basically covers what undocumented immigrants carry across the border and right off the bat like you can literally see how few items there is here so this is from carlos gomez he's 34 from guatemala and he was living in Miami for 10 years until he was deported five months ago. And then he tried to go back to the United States, but was, but was deported again from Mexico. And his bag was a shirt, scissors, a pair of pants, razor blades, pills, shampoo, deodorant, and a can of Coke and a t-shirt. Whoa. That's, can you imagine going through all of that and this is all that you have left? There's no wallet. There is no papers. 
I wonder what is going on with his identification. I I don't know if he has his own passport from his own country, but they said this is all that he has on him. I wonder what the scissors are for, honestly. Maybe that was something he just kind of grabbed or is necessary for food. But he does have pills. He has his shampoo. Even though it's really small, he has it. He has his deodorant. You know, I can't forget the Coke. And yeah, just a little outfit if he, if he wants to change out of what he has. Which is, yeah, kind of crazy. Um, it's so little because I would be going mad crazy if I had that little of things. And then someone else called Alfredo Nunes, 46, is from El Salvador. He wants to go back to the United States, but he thinks it'd be okay if he can reach the north of Mexico to find a job there. In his bag, he has a pair of shoes, a Bible, toilet paper, and a cell phone. No extra pair of clothing, no shampoo, no nothing. Just a cell phone, Bible, toilet paper, shoes, and that's it. I wonder how he has taken showers, what he uses. And it looks like he's drawn on the toilet paper. Or is that the pattern? <laughs> I don't know, but can you imagine? And this is Alfredo. He looks tired. Look at his eyes. He looks worried. And I'm not surprised because usually they just have to go up and go, you know? Like, there is no preparation. There is no... There is no nothing, honestly, to, to guarantee safety, to guarantee you'll actually reach somewhere that's decent. Um, you just have to keep going. I heard from my dad that he was very lucky to have the guidance of an uncle that knew where to go and how to get things. So he was very supported. So in a way, the way my dad migrated illegally was in a very privileged way through his connections and support system. But a lot of times people just make journeys without really knowing anyone, without having anyone, without having a lot of money saved. And both of my parents had their families behind them. Both of them were able to be more secure and arrive at a house really fast and get a job because of their connections. But everyone's coming from a different place. Um, and then here is a woman, her name is Delmis Edgar, 32 from Honduras. She was in a hurry to reach Houston where her little daughter was living with relatives. She was in a hurry, especially after her ex-husband was recently deported. And then in her bag was a makeup set, a hand mirror, a lip gloss, deodorant, a shirt, a small Bible, face gel, a wallet, a cell phone, pills, a battery charger, her hair bound, and two panty liners. So this article was released a couple years ago. I think it was from 2015, honestly. I don't feel like a lot has changed. Maybe the items vary slightly according to each person's needs and interests and stuff like that. But as more and more migrants are coming over, especially when they just get up and go in such a hurry, I think to even have this sort of thing is just a palette because you've curated what you need essentially like you like she thought she needed a makeup set so she carried it with her she had her own little hand mirror it seems like it was things that she had back where she was living at and just carried it with her i like how she's remained a female she's remained addressing her needs so this is delmis 32 she looks so much older than 32 i'm 27 she's like five years older than me and she looks grown i i just don't want to understate how stressful this journey is and how much trials and tribulations they go through and i don't know if i would personally be capable of taking these sort of journeys with so little things i i wouldn't i don't even know what i would take with me like what would i take with me i, I i'm i don't i don't even know yeah, I don't even know. And then this person, Luis Alfredo Portales, 43, from Guatemala. He lived in California for 28 years. He was supported 18 months ago when he had a drunk driving accident. He wants to go back to his wife and four sons who are living in the U.S. He already has tried to reach his family, but was deported from Mexico. In his bag, he has a t-shirt, ointment, a bottle of water, tortillas, batteries, an ID card, toothbrush, a banana, chips, and a pair of pants. 
See, everyone is coming from different places, different stories. They may have faced deportation. They may have been taken to another country that's not United States that they're not familiar with. At least he has an ID card. I'm kind of, it looks like from where he, from Guatemala. At least he has something. I wonder what's happening with the other people that didn't have IDs or identification. I, I don't know if that complicates processes for them, especially if they're trying to be political refugees, but maybe they don't even know to take it with them or they didn't have any in the first place maybe they weren't have never registered in their own local government there's a lot of unknowns on why people carry and do carry certain things from an outside perspective i like the shirt though it's very catholic <laughs> t louis 43 he looks so sad and worried he just wants to get back back he just he just wants his kids he just wants his kids and this is what he's carrying he also has a water they didn't show that in here, but he has a water right there. No jacket or nothing. Like, what if it's cold? Did other people have jackets? No, no jacket. This is just her bag. Imagine just having, this is all she has. This is all she owns. No, no jacket. And it gets cold at nights too. Like, how are they sleeping? Okay, and then this next person, his name is Roger Savon Court, 40 from Cuba. He has an interesting name, Roger. He flew to Colombia and traveled illegally through South America up to Guatemala. He wants to reach the U.S. and work honestly in America. In his bag, he has a sweater, two caps, cigars, a wallet, toilet paper, a big shell talisman to guide him on the journey, a headdress, a fanny pack, a necklace, a document holder, a small Virgin Mary statue, a cell phone, hair gel, and a detergent oil for the skin. He has a lot of things. Honestly, compared to everyone else, like that must be a heavy bag. And if you scroll down, oh, he has a book bag and he has necklaces too and sunglasses and watch. And he has this like chain over here. So it seems like he's carrying a lot more compared to others and he's very stylish. It doesn't look like he's a migrant compared to everyone else. Like he's just very clean, very fresh looking. He has this like also energy where he's like up and proud you know what i mean so i'm really happy to see that it's just i wonder how much his book bag is weighing him down and i often feel like the more valuables that you have the more likely you're susceptible to robbery so that's the only thing i'm kind of curious about i like how he has his wallet a lot of people haven't had wallets which is interesting and then ariel mija 22 from guatemala he left for the U.S. with a coyote, but he was caught as he entered Mexico and deported. He wants to reach New York where he has two brothers working there and waiting for him. In his bag, he has a handkerchief, two pairs of socks, pairs of soap, a cell phone, pills, a pen, a toothbrush, and a towel. So it's really interesting how he's from Guatemala and then he entered Mexico and then was deported, but he still has relatives here, so it seems like He's really well connected and he just has encountered misfortunes along the way. And if you don't know what a coyote, coyote is, it's basically a slang term or word to describe someone whose vocation slash job is to bring migrants over to a country where they don't have any legal paperwork at. I've seen a common theme here where a lot of people actually carry some sort of item to keep them clean whether it's soap or shampoo they have pills for some reason i think it's like advil or some sort of medical condition of sorts and toothbrush seems to be a common thing but there's not any toothpaste so i wonder if they're just like washing their teeth out of habit to feel normal um and like having that big handkerchief it just seems like there's a lot of pride and like dedication and memory to where he's coming from but also where he's trying to go so this is Ariel he looks kind of like dissociated but focused it's kind of like an eerie look have you guys ever seen those photos of like soldiers after they've seen a war and their eyes change this is a this is a look that's kind of similar to what I've seen from soldiers I think you've seen a lot I think you've seen a lot. He also has space to put stuff here. I don't. I wonder what he has in here. But uh, hopefully he's on a safe journey now. He's in a good place now. Um. So Edwin, 
Alexander Mateo, he's 22 from Guatemala. Bear in mind, these ages are wrong. If this article was from 2015, it's 2024. It's like nine years. Nine years has passed. So Edwin is now 31, 31 years old. He's from Guatemala. He traveled toward the US, but was caught in Mexico and deported. He's trying to reach America because he wants to get a job buy music equipment and become a dj and his bag pants a t-shirt a bible a cell phone a wallet a phone card perfume a prayer book toothpaste and toothbrush i wonder for the other people too if they have had cell phones they didn't showcase their cell phone so would you could you imagine doing all of this without a cell phone with no technology with no phone abilities whatsoever i would go crazy honestly this is edwin he does not look 22. he looks like he's 30. i feel like these journeys and the tribulations they face just age them and as you can see the fit is kind of casual it's loose he looks like he's just like on a normal day but it's actually not a normal day whatsoever and then andres sanchez 42 from el salvador he lived and worked in virginia two years ago he was caught during a normal police check when he was driving he was deported he's trying to go back to virginia he's traveling with no bag because he wants to look like a local like can you just 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 glasses he has a sweater at least right nothing else on him that's kind of crazy can you imagine that for yourself i don't wish this upon anyone okay well we'll do a couple more so this one is caesar 39 from guatemala he already tried to reach denver but was caught in new mexico while crossing the desert he knocked on the f he knocked on the door of a farm to ask for some water because he was thirsty after 20 minutes, the border patrol caught him. He thinks that the farmer called the patrol. In his bag, he has a wallet, a sweater, a shirt, and an envelope with some documents and phone numbers. No, they did him so dirty. He just wanted water. And it's not even like a book bag. It's like a briefcase sort of thing. He looks so tired. Why would they just call a patrol on him? Like, he just wanted water. Like... <sighs> I'm so pissed. <laughs> why would why didn't they help them instead? Oh my gosh. So Jose Alfredo Bin, 27 from Guatemala, deported from Mexico. While he was trying to get to Miami, he wants to go to the US to earn more money. In his bag, he has a pair of shorts, flip-flops, a pair of pants, two two toothbrushes, deodorant, a wallet, underwear, a belt, and a shirt of Real Madrid. Oh, Real Madrid. I think this is more of a sentimental guy who likes nice things. He didn't seem like he wanted to let go of a lot of things. Jose, there you go. He's a stylish guy. There you go. He looks young. He looks skinny too. He has a little belt going on. Can't see his shoes, but I can imagine they're not that comfy if you like style. But can you imagine the privilege of two toothbrushes? Just in case one goes bad, he has another one. And he has a little sandals. He likes the sandals. What can I say? I like my sandals too. Okay, let's do a last one. Oh no, that was the last one. Yeah, that was the last one. Yeah, this is basically the article. I've been thinking about it for the past years, honestly. It was very impactful when I first read it. And I just cannot imagine going through the same thing and taking such hard decisions and being so ruthless with what I take and not take. I really respect everyone that makes the decisions they make that are that hard. There's a lot of danger. There's a lot of improbabilities and failures that can come up because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know where you're at. There's so many language barriers, financial barriers, a lot of people against you, a lot of political divisiveness. And I just have to remember that I'm fighting for a better fashion future through my content. but. At the end of the day, like, it's nothing compared to what other real people are experiencing. And I like to take my activism in a more intersectional approach. I think if we're going to fight for, like, fashion justice, we have to fight for social justice, which is, like, Latino justice. For those grappling with, like, oh, should I or should I not be boycotting fast fashion? Or should I or should I not be buying this, like, 
sustainable fashion brand or maybe it's not okay to buy secondhand like i want you to get grounded on like you have so much privilege and so much time and ability to reflect on these many little details in your life and i really believe that if you're thinking about sustainable fashion you have stable housing you have decent earnings or you have some sort of like support system and so i just want us to reflect that we're very lucky to be where we're at and also we have to fight for what's really important in life and not forget the people that are still trying to reach said quote american dream that we may have already fulfilled and if you haven't reached the american dream if you don't have all these like privilege criteria and I would just say recognize your own biases and your own prejudices and reflect on how you're serving your community. Let me know what you thought of this video. It's very chill, but I, I like these videos. I kind of keep it real. It's more, more casual, more chill. I don't want to perform for YouTube. If I'm going to be on this platform for a long time, like I just want to make very like true and authentic content and this feels real to me. So let me know what you thought of this video and what other content you want to see going forward. Until next Sunday, peace and love. Oh.